Talk about marijuana as a therapeutic for, for pain. Yes, it Patrick, a, and, and the, the overlap between emotional distress and or pain and physical pain, as you know, is, is uh, very significant. And it's particularly true in this population of patients. Uh, for example, when I first started doing this, I was told by a knowledgeable medical person who knew this group pretty well from past experience that I would have the most trouble with what she called recreational users. And I asked her how, what she meant by that. And she said, well, you'll see a lot of young men who will come in and they'll tell you about their lumbar pain or their cervical pain, and their old automobile accident, or how they fell off their skateboard. Now they're seeing a, a chiropractor and they've got this intractable pain, that's why they want to smoke marijuana. And they're really just recreational users. So I took that under advisement, and she was right. I saw a significant number of young men like this. But after talking to several of them over a period of a month or so, I came to the conclusion that they were not recreational users at all. Oh, really? Really, because uh, a recreational user in San Francisco has no trouble acquiring pot, especially if he's in the right age group. If he's an adult between 18 and 30, he's going to have plenty of acquaintances and know where to get pot. The street price and the club price is not that different. And the reason of that, for that is because black markets, whenever you have a spread in price, commodity. Uh, someone will move in to occupy that niche, so another black market develops, which is why the, the prices tend to be the same. So it becomes one of being, uh, the issue becomes one of being assured of a good supply, assured of a steady supply of good quality material, and that's what the clubs offer. Uh, these are patients who were criminalized by their use before this initiative was passed. So the, the chief thing that the initiative offers them is a protection from arrest or a protection if they are arrested. So uh, to, to start out with the assumption that they're recreational users doesn't make a lot of sense because there's uh, the second thing is that in, in talking to them in detail about how they use this material, they use it at the same time every day and in the same amounts. And they use remarkably small amounts each week. And the use tends to be consistent. And this is the way people use medicine, not the way they use recreational drugs. And then finally, and most the most convincing thing was that when I address a few issues in the history. The evidence for, the, for this being mostly emotional pain literally comes tumbling out of so many of them. And when I point it out to them, they agree with me, almost to a man. And uh, basically what I'm saying is that I've, th this population of young men could easily be diagnosed with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder or ADHD which is a condition which has come into prominence recently actually only been named recently but which is occupying a lot of uh, attention right now because it's being diagnosed so frequently could you uh, what could you just I mean what would what would be the typical symptoms of ADHD in, in a nutshell the symptoms begin in grade school uh, they're kids who won't sit still, can't mm -hmm. concentrate on anything for any length of time, uh, are always racing around the classroom and driving the teacher crazy. And the kids that they put on the, the, and these, okay. Yeah, some of them are identified as reading problems with so-called dyslexia. Oh. And you're right, it's a population that has been treated mainly with uh, Ritalin. Their older brothers and sisters are now being treated with another medication called Adderall, which is really, uh, I hate to use this word, but it's speed. 
Uh -huh. It's an amphet it's pharmaceutical amphetamine. And and uh, and you're saying that marijuana is is a, is an effective agent for ADD? Yes, to to cut to the chase. Yes, marijuana may be the best available treatment for ADHD, which is a shocking will be a shocking statement to. Ask you, Tom, is is uh, about the ADD. Uh, have have any studies been published uh, regarding this? You, you said that some people would be surprised that. Because it does bring up some interesting issues. Are, are you suggesting that uh, that uh, teenagers, which, uh, in a sense, within the movement of decriminalization, it's an understood thing that uh, we're talking about adult responsible use of marijuana, not not the use of, of uh, medically with teenagers. Is is that a, a possibility? Yes. You're saying that 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 adults with ADD that AD, with ADD, you personally have treated adults with ADD with medical marijuana, and and you have seen def definite therapeutic benefit. What I see is a population of uh, young people, very few under 18. Uh, all the applicants see these are people applying under present California law, which. Uh, doesn't specify adults only, but it, uh, it's under, generally understood that these will be 18-year-old plus applicants. But they've done the experiment. They've been using marijuana, which they've obtained from the criminal market for either months or years before they come to see me for this request. What they're requesting is my benediction, not my prescription. And technically, I don't treat them. I'm just advising them that yes, marijuana seems reasonable in this situation, which is really all the initiative uh, was designed to, to say. And I, so I've seen these young adults who, in my judgment, could easily be diagnosed with ADHD, who are reporting that their symptoms are stabilized and they're greatly benefited. Sure. Uh, they're using of marijuana. So, by extension, I think for adolescents with this problem, yes, marijuana is probably the treatment of choice. And as a practical matter, everybody that I've ever talked to about their use of their request for medical marijuana has owned up to having experimented with marijuana on their own hook starting at age eight. Hmm. The majority at eight between ages uh, 14 and 16, but on up to age 21. In other words, I haven't seen anybody who never tried marijuana before. Mm -hmm. well, let me ask you, uh, I don't want to get way off the subject here, but I mean sometimes words have uh, implications like the word recreational or the word spiritual. Uh, and. Uh, it's, it just seems to me like um, the word, um, it seems to me like, like, like the word uh, in terms of describing the effect of marijuana on interpersonal relationships, um, some people have used the word uh, deepening are uh, ex ex enhancing a, a relationship or, or even, now that you mention it, sexu sexual therapy or appetite uh, enhancement. Well, uh, okay, now what I'm saying, now, now here's a word, I mean I'm just, I, I don't mean to cut you off here, but here on the one hand we have enhancement and then the message from the war on drugs over since Nixon is like that the drugs tear apart families or the drugs destroy the family the drug or, now, now when it comes to marijuana I mean uh, how does this how does this I mean do you see uh, let's say one of your patients uh, your adult patients uh, with ADD and uh, uh, you find marijuana helps them I mean would could you you would picture them smoking at home in the evening just the same as they were drinking a beer say 
uh, I mean, some people would think of, I mean, how does that jive with uh, marijuana destroying family structure?